of science and indeed evidence in the world of sexual behaviour than Dr. Petra Boynton, a sex educator, agony aunt and academic. And I've seen her about at least two of those things personally myself. <laughs> Petra, I always need academic help. Petra, please come on board. <laughs> than perhaps I wanted to reveal, but thanks Evan uh, for sharing that. Um, that was a wonderful talk we just heard, and I wondered how many other people here have experienced help from health or medical science? How many of us have had help? And how many of us here are social scientists? Or is it just, hooray, it's not a social scientist. So, okay. So I'm here to talk about collaborative partnerships and creative working. Um, when we think of science, we often think of particular areas of interest, and we tend to sometimes forget about the health of social scientists. And, and obviously, I want to talk about us in that role, but thinking of everyone together. I think if we don't think of our work collaboratively, we miss out on critical thinking, we miss out on creative practice. And I think while we're talking about science cuts today, other people have said we really need to think about research cuts. It's, it's research and academic cuts going on all over the place that many of us are already struggling with. And it would be important to not to forget our friends in the arts and humanities who are also being affected. And you've already seen with Evan singing just how wonderful it can be when science and art comes together. <laughs> if we have cuts to that, we'll never hear that song again. Which actually might be a good thing, but never mind. So I wanted to talk a little bit. We've heard some, some really important stories so far about why science is important and how it's going to affect our lives and our communities and our country if it's cut. But my work is, is very much often working with people internationally on the ground, people whose voices are not often heard. And I wanted to talk about what's going to happen if there are cuts made to our lives as practitioners. If we're facing cuts, it's going to affect our training, it's going to affect our ability to teach, it's going to affect our ability to pass on all the skills that we have learned. It's going to be junior researchers and academics who are going to be missing out. It's going to be people struggling so hard, so fast to find funding, they're not going to be able to have the time to nurture and encourage and celebrate science in young people who are coming up through science and, and also their colleagues. Now we've seen in health, um, particularly internationally, when people are sort of competing to try and get their areas taken seriously, when they're trying to get funding for their work, a lot of the standards drop. And I'm particularly worried as a social scientist working in healthcare, where we're sending people out into communities to do vital health research, that their training is going to be compromised if we don't have proper funding and their safety will be compromised. We tend to think about this just in terms of our research output or economics, but you've got to remember that a lot of us doing research are also people doing teaching, doing pastoral care. So the care that we're having for students and for our colleagues is also going to be diminished, and that worries me. It really worries me a lot. It also worries me that if we're facing cuts, the logical thing that tends to happen is we compete. Everybody's out for their own funding. And we're not going to be working together. And the thing that's so wonderful about seeing all of you here today is that everybody is here together. We're not worrying about the idea of factions between sides because we are all at risk here. But we're also standing up and saying what is important. Now, most of my work is done internationally. And I think, again, there's worries. And we've heard a lot about what's going to happen economically if we're not having international working practice, if we're not having um, financial or innovation or, or ways to move our, our work forward. But again, I bring you back to some of the people I work with. So it might be a doctor in Uganda or a sex educator in Thailand, or it might be a nurse in South Africa. And if we're struggling with cuts here for research that we've grown collaboratively with these countries and education and sharing practice, that is also going to be affected. So it's not just us who's affected here. There's lots of people worldwide who are going to be harmed if our funding is cut and our ability to share our skills go. But I wanted to think of some positive ways, apart from singing songs, which are wonderful, um, that we could do to maybe flag up what's going on. And one of the things I think, again, that's wonderful about here today is all of us gathered here and saying why science is important. But traditionally, as scientists, we're quite, we're quite shy. 
Sex researchers like me obviously aren't shy, but most of you generally are. And so I would say take some lessons that we've learned from other areas, which is to flag up what you know. Tell other people why your work is amazing. Tell other people why you are amazing and why what you do is so important. And that could be through blogging. It could be through your student newspaper. It might be through contacting the local press and telling them what you're engaged with. It could be telling your mum how wonderful your work is and getting other people to lobby on our behalf because there's lots of us affected by what's going on. If we're explaining why it's so important and sharing and celebrating this, I know we're facing a difficult and frightening time, but it's also a way we could really share how wonderful we are and how amazing science is to actually make other people want to celebrate and acknowledge science is vital. Thank you very much.